just want to go over some random small uh, Amazon pickups I got recently because I haven't been doing any online shopping for like months and months and months but all of a sudden over the last month or two I've ordered a bunch of different stuff well not a bunch but some different things. So let's just take a look at today. So I'm going to my most recent purchase. And that is this cologne. I just got this a couple days ago and I absolutely love it. It has this sort of, oh no, it's a real chain, huh? I thought that was a fake chain. But this is Club de Noe Intense Man. I'm assuming it's by this company here, Arm Off. Club de Noe. And this story. I've never been a huge cologne person. Oh, look, they have this ingredients alcohol, denatured aqua fragrance. And you have some that looks like Arabian there. And you have these little fake like rhinestone things all in. on the cap here. Here's your spray. Like I said, historically I've never been a big fragrances person. But the other day, um, I don't really know why. I just kind of got this idea that I should grab, like, just grab one, <laughs> or, or, because I've basically been wearing the same cologne for, like, a year now, I have a, I have two bottles of cologne, I have a bottle of Dior Sauvage, which I've been wearing pretty much daily, I really like it, but I feel like it's not that strong of a scent, and it also feels very neutral in a way, and it feels quite, um, like by the end of the day, it's pretty much non-existent. And then I have this Stetson cologne, like the cowboy hat <laughs> maker Stetson. And it's actually a pretty good scent, but it's very strong, like sort of leathery type scent that I wear on special occasions. But I just, I got this idea, I need to get a new one, and I went on Amazon and this had amazing reviews. I looked up some videos about it, and it had really good positive reviews. And I've been wearing this every day since I got it, and I absolutely love this. Club de Nui Intense. Man, I'm definitely going to get another bottle. The smell. Man, it's hard to describe. It's really strong, though. Like, even now, just taking the cap off, it's a really strong scent. I can smell it. Probably from, like, a couple, like, a foot or two away, I can smell it pretty strongly. It has a sort of floral, uh, not, like a, like a nice floral type scent. But it's really good. Like I said, I've been wearing this every day. And my fiance pointed out I didn't I didn't tell her I was wearing it, but she pointed out that I smelled really good after I'd put this on, so uh it's it's definitely strong. So I've i what I do is I put one spray behind each ear and then one spray on each wrist and I wouldn't do much more than that, but if you're looking for a good scent, and 
this was pretty cheap. I think this is only like 40-ish dollars on Amazon. Uh, and that was Australian dollars, so those in the U.S. you might be able to get it cheaper. I would definitely check this one out. I also got this new wallet by Folkit. I don't know if you've ever heard of them before. So, I have been rocking the same wallet since like 2017. And that's this, this Gucci card holder has been my main wallet for, I say, 2017 or 2019 for a long time. You can see the indents there. Now you can see where the leather is bent. You have the Gucci B on it, which I love. I have a, a, sh a Gucci shirt with the B on it as well. You know, it's been it's been well loved and it's it's still held up because it's a high quality leather and everything right but uh, I didn't want to you know this is a nice piece this is a nice card holder so I figured instead of continuing to use this until it disintegrated it's time to make a change I got this one in a, a brown leather. I think this was about $40. You have two places for cards here on the outside. And then you have this magnetic clasp here. This is a spot. You could put some cash in there. Whatever else here. And then on the back you have your ID window. So your ID goes there. But the best part, you have this little slide. And it can fit up to five cards. So these are the four cards that I use most often. That's my daily uh, personal card. That's my joint account card. So those are at the back and at the front. The two easiest to get to. Joint purchases, personal purchases. And then I have my American credit card and my American debit card, which I use less frequently, but still have them. And that just pushes down like that. So it's really convenient. Just grab a card, push it back in, push them all down. And it's not that much, like, obviously with Wise, there's a very big difference, but lengthwise it's basically the same, and they carry them, you know, just like with this, I can carry it in my front pocket, which is where I prefer to have my wallet. So I've been using that uh, the last couple of days, and I really like it, it's really convenient. Just a nice change of pace. And actually having an ID window instead of having to pull my ID out because the obviously the Gucci card holder doesn't have an ID window. So yeah. I don't ever really have cash. But if I ever just have some bills, you could put maybe I don't know what you could put in here. Oh, this is actually it. Oh no, it is a pocket. Yeah, I don't know what you could put in there, but some cash, maybe. Like a, if you have a ticket, to like a, a movie ticket or a sports event ticket or something, although that's all on your phone now, but you could put something there. It's just a nice little front pocket wallet. Really been enjoying that. Next up, actually the last two things here are both books. So first up we have Stormfront by Jim Butcher. And this is the first novel in the Dresden Files series. And this is a series I've been interested in for a very long time but have never gotten around to reading. I 
just finished the last novel that I was reading, and I was like, you know what, it's time maybe to, it's time to try something new, time to, and this has been on my list for a while, so I decided why not, and I know that there's some mixed opinions on this series, and I know that it, from book to book it can wildly vary in quality. But I've heard that at least this first entry here is quite good. So we'll see if I end up liking the book. Me, Dairy Dresden. Chicago's first and only wizard B.I. Turns out the everyday world is full of strange and magical things, and most of them don't play well with humans. That's where Harry comes in. Harry is the best at what he does, and not just because he's the only one who does it. So whenever the Chicago PD is a case that transcends mortal capabilities, they look to him for answers. But business isn't just slow. It stinks. So when the police bring him in to consult on a grisly double murder committed with black magic, Harry seeing dollar signs. Where there's black magic, there's a black mage behind it. And now that mage knows Harry's name. And that's when things start to get interesting. Magic it can get a guy killed. And uh I've heard like Dresden like by the end of the series he's basically a, like a living god, like his power escalation's pretty crazy. And has a very uh like humorous tone as well. And some of the things apparently his companion is a talking skull named Bob. But, yeah, like I said, it's a book I've been interested in for a very long time. Oh, there you go. Harry, Bob lectured me. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Right, right there's Bob, the uh, talking skull. But there's humor in it. Um, I think this was written in the early 90s. So you have like before smartphones and social media and stuff, so yeah, excited to finally get in with that. Uh, been a book series I've wanted to read for a long time. And finally, you might have seen it uh, sitting on my bookshelf over there, but this is the NRSV Catholic Bible Gift Edition. I specifically wanted the new revised standard version because uh, it is an extremely uh, accurate and um, like academic focused translation. Um, it's basically as direct of a translation from the Septuagint as you can get without doing any sort of you know, inspired changes or anything like that that some translations will do. Um, so a lot of academics and scholars use this version, which is my purpose in this. Uh, you know, I'm not taking this as a, I'm not approaching this as a churchgoer. I'm approaching this from a uh, academic point of view. But it's the Catholic edition, which means you get the deuterocanonical books from the Septuagint, so the Septuagint, so you get Tobit, Judith, Baruch, Ecclesiasticus, Wisdom, and First and Second Maccabees. Um, and I just wanted to have those extra books in this translation. This is specifically the translation that I wanted. Um, so, okay, so this is the gift edition about the NRSV, renowned for its balance of scholarship and readability. The NRSV is a trustworthy translation appropriate for personal, spiritual formation, and for academic use. Um, so, it comes in this little sleeve and as you can see it has this nice white leather with uh, there's the spine NRSV Holy Bible Catholic Bible Press
us the pages are gold nice gold edged pages and you have you know it's meant to be a gift edition but overall it's really nice catholic edition anglicized text uh, you see you have Preface to the New Revised Standard Version, preface to Anglicized Edition to the reader, and then it kind of talks about Catholic spiritual life, how to read the Bible, facts about the Bible, words, and then kind of the, who the writers are, and then that list of Jesus' miracles, the church roots, the spiritual roots of Christianity in general. Um, why the Apostles' Creed is the Apostles' Creed, why Catholics worship and pray the way they do, um, Catholic morality, where that's found, and then all of that, the timeline of the church, and the timeline of the church, I find is really interesting. You see here, there's your Baruch, um, there, where is, there's 1st and 2nd Maccabees, there's Tobit, there's Judith. Yeah, those are in Protestant translations. Those tend to not be present, uh, but they're part of the Catholic canon. But the, the timeline bit's actually really interesting. Um, if we get to that. Yeah, so for instance, this is the year 1500. It says, like, Catholic Church history, you have dates of popes and saints, and there's St. Francis Xavier, a quite renowned saint. Um, Reformation begins with Martin Luther's 95 Thesis in 1517, so that's right there. So there's the start of the Protestant Reformation, the founding of the Jesuits, so all that, which is really cool as a way to, like, understand, and then they pair that with the same in uh, world history. So, William Shakespeare, the Gregorian calendar, you know, all of that, the sacking of Rome, that's all really cool. And then at the back of the book, at the back of the book you have translation and they have like um, obviously the footnotes of what it says in the Hebrew although this is from the you know the Greek Septuagint it says where the meaning is uncertain is uncertain and then so like here if we go to H H is I'm trying to find 16 20. Six. Okay, so the one who sets the goat free for SSL shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in water. And it says this is traditionally rendered a scapegoat, so it's saying that in other translations that are more faith focused, they'll put that, but the actual, like, direct translation is this instead, so it gives you both options, which I find is interesting. It tells you where the meaning of words is unknown, which I appreciate. Um, there was one particular instance really early that stood out to me. I don't know if I'll find it again. Um, void and darkness occurred to face the earth while a wind from God and it says like or while the spirit of God or while a mighty wind so just things like that but a number of items that I picked up recently that thought you guys 
guys just might find interesting. Quite an eclectic mix here. But anyways, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up. <laughs> Sorry, the camera's quite close. Uh, and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this almost every single day. Till next time, guys. Bye-bye.